Cowboys senior guard Kenny Foster has captured the hearts of teammates, coaches, and fans. His toughness and loyalty have been crucial to the Wyoming program. Foster's resilience has been tested across five years in Laramie as he's worked his way back from numerous ailments that have plagued his career. October 3rd of 2023 seemed to be the knockout punch. Foster had ruptured his Achilles in practice. I think it was probably the first time I cried <laughs> um, on the court and stuff, and it was, it was a really emotional day. It, it's hard, like, especially walking into that, knowing that happened, like, and getting the news, like, it could be anywhere from, like, six months to, like, two years where I can feel better about it. And, you know, that was, that was really, like, hardening on me and just, it, it definitely took a toll. When he went down, I was like, he's done for, with basketball forever. He's never been better in his career going into that injury. So it was kind of crazy to see that he, uh, he was in such a good spot. I was like, how is this happening? He's testing off the charts and all this stuff. Um, so, yeah, to say I was emotional in that moment would be an understatement. Foster's final season in brown and gold would almost certainly be on the sidelines. While devastated with the situation, he didn't let it hinder the impact he's always had on the team. He was being a leader, talking still, helping the freshmen out. Um, Helping on defense, telling them what to do on offense, things like that, where to be, positioning, and things like that. So even though he couldn't you know, be on the court with us, he was, he was still helping out a lot. Behind the scenes, Foster continued to attack his rehab, and by mid-January, what seemed impossible was suddenly within reach. Dr. Gamey was like, hey, I don't want to see you again. He said, this is healing tremendously. And so after I heard that, it was... It was game on. Then in the Cowboys' February 17th game against San Jose State, Foster not only suited up, but made a statement. He played 12 minutes, just over four months removed from his surgery. I don't want my last year to be on the bench and not doing anything. I want my last year at least. I can sit there and say I gave it my all to come back and, you know, try to go out with something a little more exciting than that. I mean, this is just something that I saw as almost a competition to try to see if I can beat the record for coming back. He's one of the toughest, you know, um, mentally and physically. He's, he's been able to get through a lot of stuff. Um, and, you know, going through that many injuries, I don't know if I'd be able to still be there mentally, you know, and so he is. It, it was one movement, and it was the movement that did it that scared me beyond belief. And sometimes you got to go out and say, screw it. And that's what I did. Kenny never ran from his problems. And I think that's him being, you know, cowboy tough, but just tough and resilient in general and persistent. He's going to be successful in life because of that. Four thousand eight hundred sixty miles. That's roughly how far Epu Kayanto traveled from his hometown of Klaukala, Finland to study as an exchange student at Central High School this past year. Moving to a brand new place with brand new people is difficult for anyone, but through sports, he was able to quickly build relationships with his peers. Epu comes from a background of basketball, and its popularity in America played a big role in his decision to study abroad. I love basketball, and that was one of my main reasons to come to States, because the basketball is different here. So I started when I was four, so I've been playing it now 14 years, every year. And in Finland, sports are in clubs, so all I do is basketball all year long. Epu arrived in Cheyenne last August, so he would have had to wait about four months until the season if he was solely focused on the hardwood. Instead, he decided to dive headfirst into a brand new sport. Uh, football, I was thinking, like, I'll get more physical, and I'll probably get stronger too. So once I go back to playing center as in Finland, I'm able to push more of my defense, defensive guy. And just to experience new sport and stay in shape for basketball and to learn new stuff and make new friends because sport is a great way to make new friends. As if learning one new sport on the fly wasn't enough, Epu went and took on another athletic challenge after the basketball season ended. More soccer, it was at first hospital, I didn't even know how to kick the ball. But I, I decided because I'm tall, tall, and I'm big basketball, I, I have decent hands, so I probably should be a goalie, and I tried for goalie, and 
it was pretty fun at first, but it, at first it was hard to like know how to dive correctly so I don't get turf burned and how to like do saves and react the ball and the way I'm supposed to like be in the goal when the shot is coming. But once I got that, I was pretty good because well, as I said, I had good hands already. Epu made the most of his time he had in the Cowboy State, both academically and athletically, and he's proud of himself for stepping out of his comfort zone to make memories that will stay with him forever. Graduating from high school, even though it didn't really matter, but still being able to like pass all of my classes in different language and like different teacher and different school system, and then just making to being in the, around the varsity teams in all three sports, even though it's a different country, a kind of different way you play, and two new sports. So I would say that's a pretty good accomplishment I did, and just like making a bunch of friends that probably will last lifelong. So that's also I would say that's a pretty good accomplishment. Later this summer, Epo will head back to Finland, and he plans on continuing to play basketball there next year. For Wyoming News Now, I'm Alex Eisman. Star Valley has gone back to back. It's been about a half hour since this game went final, but as you can see, still some lingering people celebrating this victory. In a matter of moments, we're going to have a true clash of the Titans. It's number one East. It's number two Sheridan. And the T-Birds are looking to avenge their loss in the 2022 4A state championship. But offensively for Wyoming, you, we're going to see a, a healthy dose of Harrison Whaley oh, because yeah. CSU has had some issues with run defense. The competition was certainly heating up this afternoon. The margins between those advancing and not advancing to the semifinals were razor thin, and it kept everyone on the edge of their seat during the fourth progressive round. To kick things off, Bill Tudor delivered a lesson in bareback riding. Coaches talk about having trouble getting some bigger teams to, to come play basketball at 72-20, and the Cowgirls are going to have an opportunity to play a Power 5 opponent in the Dome of Doom. I'm here at Risky Field where it's really starting to feel like football weather. The temp may be cooling down, but the rivalry flame between East and Central stays white hot. It's going to be any team, any day. We saw it last year with Laramie making that run to the title game. You know, Thunder Basin beat East in the regional championship, and then East came back to win the state. It's going to be pure chaos, and I'm so here for it. Wolverines up two, and you just can't do that. Disaster for them, life for East. Can they do it? Inbound to Mirich for it. Oh, he got it. Nathan Mirich, improbable comeback for the East Thunderbirds. She's now three-peated as the champ in outdoor states, and the margin of victory was massive. Morris's jump of 19 feet, eight and a half inches, was a foot and two inches more than the second place finisher. The University of Wyoming held a celebration of life this evening to remember the three swimmers who lost their lives on February 22nd in a single car accident on Highway 287. The Wyoming community, as well as athletes from Northern Colorado and Colorado State, all came together to honor Charlie Clark, Carson Muir, and Luke Slabber. It's simply overdue for Wyoming. They haven't beaten Fresno in a very long time. This one's going to have some serious implications for the Mountain West, especially now that they got rid of divisions. It's just going to be the top two teams. Fresno's the only team in the conference that's ranked. And again, the three falls, and at this point, he's just pin hunting the heat check from way out there. And how about it? Guy Fieri couldn't cook the way number three is in this game. The Texas Tech Red Raiders became the first Power 5 team to play a game in Laramie since 2019. The last, the University of Missouri, who returned to Columbia 0-1 on their season after a Wyoming comeback victory. Ultimately, Tech would go on to suffer the same fate. Looking for an answer in the second, and they got it. Nuketown, population, Porsche, cameraman. Is it Sam Shumway or is it Jason Williams? I'm not sure. Flashes of white chocolate. Who could forget the magic within the post-6 program when they went to their first ever Legion World Series? And they were the first team from Wyoming to go as well. The team played four very competitive games and put the country on notice that Cheyenne had some certified ballers. Win it with that group of guys and great coaches as well was pretty awesome. And All-State and 4A Player of the Year, that's got to be pretty cool too, right? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty sweet. Just a little cherry on top for sure. Who else but Dane Steele? Taking back the second half kickoff all the way to the house. He scored five touchdowns tonight. Final 30 seconds. Aaron Gordon on the counter, fast break. Aaron Gordon, can you?